Here's a treat for any puzzle fanatics who may be watching. I'm about to show you the world's most complicated puzzle. It's as big as America, and the pieces are constantly changing shape. Get out your card tables and pour some coffee. We're talking legislative districts. As a basic concept, districting is pretty simple. In order to ensure proportional representation at the Capitol, we've divided our state into 67 slices of approximately equal population. That's why the chunks around Minneapolis and St. Paul are so tiny, and those blimp-like monstrosities on the Iron Range are about half the size of Canada. Each district gets one senator and two members in the House, and ideally, everybody's happy. Except when it gets complicated. As we all know, people like to move. And over time, as some regions grow and others fizzle, we're forced to redraw the map. It's a process known as redistricting. And that's when it gets ugly. Legislative districts, at least in theory, are supposed to be drafted by the Senate and the House of Representatives and signed by the governor, just like any other piece of legislation. In recent decades, most redistricting proposals have been redrawn in the courts after facing numerous legal challenges. But since the starting point is the legislature, it's possible for the majority party to draw a map that favors their team. And that's where the word gerrymandering comes from. Media personalities have appropriated it to describe all sorts of shady behavior, but it was originally a very specific term that meant redrawing districts in a way that favors your political ideology. Let's take a look at what happens when gerrymandering is taken to the extreme. And by the way, being a political commentator in Minnesota is like waiting for a fist fight at a church service. In order to find a really controversial example, I had to look elsewhere. This is North Carolina's 12th Congressional District, as it existed in 1992. This district, if you can even call it that, was over 160 miles long, and in most places, no wider than the highway. These branches, sticking out here and here and all over the place, consolidated minority voters in a way that ultimately proved unconstitutional. Redistricting, in this sense, is like many facets of government. In principle, it reflects a commitment to fairness. But in practice, our insatiable willingness to manipulate the system leads us to seek out loopholes in an unseemly fashion. And that's why we're talking about this now. Our country is about to collect new census data and start the whole process from scratch. As a puzzle fanatic myself, it would be nice if the pieces didn't look like the intestines of a giraffe. That's all the time we have this week. Let us know what doesn't make sense, and we'll do our best to figure out how it happens.